Bloody race riots. Worse than bloody football. I don't know what this bloody country is coming to. It's getting full of hooligans. They're all either anti this or anti that, or hands off him or hands off her. I tell you, these days, you're a bloody sight better off dealing with the conventional, orthodox, straightforward criminal classes. I mean, I mean, your straightforward criminal classes are bad enough, but at least most of them have got a bit of respect for the law. Do you know how many of our lads have been injured this week? Five. Five. And they talk about bloody marvellous, isn't it? Police brutality. I call it civilian brutality. Bloody hooligans. Ah, oh, Kevin's not hooligan. They've only got to fight each other, haven't they? One side against the other side. But us, poor bloody police, we got to fight both bloody sides, haven't we? Well, it's not Kevin's fault, is it? I mean, he can't tell, but if he's set upon just because he's coloured, can he? I mean, that's all he's done, isn't it? That's all he's done wrong, is being coloured, isn't it? Besides, he's only half coloured, really. He's Irish on his father's side. So it's not Kevin's fault that he's coloured. It's his father's to blame for that, not Kevin. If his father had been a bit more fussy who he slept with, Kevin would be white, like us. <laughs> Still, knowing the Irish, his father was probably drunk when he was doing it. <laughs> Look, there's no harm in our Kevin. He wouldn't hurt a fly, he wouldn't. Wouldn't hurt a fly? No, I don't suppose he would. They do seem to be a bit fond of them. Yeah. <laughs> when I was over there, they used to sit covered in them. I used to think they was, they was too lazy to brush them off. But I suppose it is just possible that they've got a, a soft spot for them. Well, I can't stand here all day talking to you. We've got a football crowd coming in. They're the hooligans. They're the ones you ought to lock up. Don't worry, we will. I'd rather have ten Pakistanis living with me than one of them. Bloody hooligans. All they're fit for is throwing toilets out of train windows. <laughs> I wish they'd throw each other out of train windows. We'll make our Saturdays a lot easier. Well, what about Kevin? You're not going to keep him in, are you? I've got my supper to think of. Yeah. You want to take him with you? Or will you eat him here? Very <laughs> funny. <laughs> Morning and Dick. Trouble with the old farmers? Oh, I'm trying to go to the toilet. Oh, go on then. What, in my own time? <laughs> <laughs> you two went ten minutes ago. <laughs> Morning, Arthur. Have a nice weekend. Oh, yeah, I got through a bit of K-Lai, though. Sure. Hey, look, I'll tell you what, go easy with Packy Paddy. Yeah, he's had a bit of a nasty experience this weekend. Oh, blimey, looks like Moisha Dian. <laughs> <laughs> Moisha Dian? Who's Moisha Dian? He's a Jewish general. I don't look like a Jewish general. Oh, there's a lot of chance you're looking like a bloody Jewish general. Oh, good, good. Thank him for that. <laughs> What's all the pirate gear for? He's this? got a black eye. Oh, I've got two. Look, I tell you what happened. It's not fair. Not fair. Not bloody fair. I'm walking down the high street, you see. Walking down the high street, I'm very friendly and very, very kind. Very gentle. Not doing any trouble. Suddenly I turn a corner. Kapow, blam, splat. <laughs> bloody hit fight. Bloody race riot. I get hit fight in the eye, hit fight in the nose, kick up Kaiser, Kaiser pass. <laughs> bloody painful. Bloody painful. What happened then? What, what happened? Didn't you tell me what he said? He got in a race riot in the ice field on Friday race night. Race riot? Well, he shouldn't go to the race riots, should he? <laughs> I don't go to race riots. I don't like race riots. I never go to race riots. You're not a bad bloody judge, mate. Look, if you must, I was going to the football match. Well, if you was going to the football, mate, what were you doing in the high street? The football ground is nowhere near the high street. The football ground is in the other bloody direction. Look, I was going to holy confession in case I get killed at the football match. <laughs> <laughs> holy confession? What are you going to holy confession for? You're not a redneck Catholic, you're a bloody Muslim. Look. My mother is a red-necked Muslim. <laughs> but 
My father's a redneck Catholic, so remember that. Oh, marvellous, isn't it? Oh, hello, Tarzan. Marvellous. That way he gets the choice of two heavens, doesn't he? He gets our one and his own one. There's only one heaven, young Dick. Only one? <laughs> only one heaven? You mean they haven't got their own black one? So we've got to put up with them up there as well. Don't worry, we'll be segregated there as well. Look good, yeah, we segregate all the quiet country brown people like us from those white hit pipe sambos. Terrible! Did you ever pick fight and I hit fight and nose kick up Jackson? Terrible! Terrible! I know it must be old fruit. Look, but don't get the wrong impression. Every Englishman isn't like that. Many Englishmen were like that on Saturday. Too bloody many, I tell you. Look, I know it looks bad. It but feels bloody bad to hear and I'm not the jet. I'm sure it does, old fruit. The nose is a very tender spot. So is I and Kaiba. <laughs> I know how you feel, old son, but try and imagine how I feel. Not as bloody bad as I feel. You see Bruce here? Like I, that? Look, I know this. Physical pain, Kevin. Physical pain. But the pain that I feel... My soul hurts. Ah, soul. But not Kevin. <laughs> Physical pain heals quickly, Kevin. What? But what I have... The pain... When I heard what happened to you on Saturday night, do you know how I felt? I felt sick at heart. I felt... I felt as if something dirty had crawled all over me. I was ashamed. Deeply ashamed. I felt... Give over, Arthur. You'll have us all in tears in a minute. Yeah, ah, yes. Well, I'm glad. I'll tell you why I sent for you, Norman. Look, what bothers me is, look... How does this duck work? Like this. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> Indian doctor arranged conduct in Liverpool doorway. He tells judge I had three Guinnesses and everything went black. <laughs> How's your heart, Arthur? Still bleeding? Don't you understand anything, Norman? No, what I understand is they bring it on themselves, that lot. Bring it on themselves? Yes, they provoke the race riots, that lot, they do. My lot? You think I like to get hit fight and I hit fight and nose and kick up Jacksy? No. Bloody fool, you're bloody fool, man. What rubbish. Not rubbish. No. <laughs> oh, good luck to you, little Bristol Rover. <laughs> so, so you tell me, tell me, how can I make, how can I make a, a, a race riot... Oh, oh, yeah, I'm only supposed to whistle at the birds, not the blokes. Never interfere with a man's religion. Remember what I told you? There's a boy across the river about him. Oh, <laughs> nice, oh, nice. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, how can I make a race riot on my own? How? On my own? Tell me. You lot provoked the race riots, mate, by being here. And if you wasn't here, there wouldn't be any bleeding race riots, would there? I mean, that stands to reason. Any bloody fool can see that. Oh, that's marvellous. Marvellous bit of bloody logic, that is. Just because I'm here and I'm a bit on the brown side, according to you, I can deserve a clump. I'm not talking about you, Kenny. You're a bit different. Not to that bloody mob down the high street, I'm not. They ain't too bloody fussy. Yeah, if I'd have been there on Saturday, I'd have got a whack. And according to you, I would have provoked it just by being there. You're around the bloody twist, you are. Look, I don't like these mob as much as you do. What? You know that. <laughs> but I mean, I draw the line at a man getting a thump just because he's a bit on the brown side. How would you like it if you got a thump for being a bit on the white side, you bloody Liverpool egg? <laughs> I'm in my own country, among my own kind, aren't I? So am I. That's what you say. And what do you mean by that? And what do you mean by me being a bit on the white side? Well, you are a bit on the white side. In fact, to me, you're a bit on the bloody greyish yellow. <laughs> now, there's no need to be insulting, Kenneth. You said not to be insulting. What? Look, I'd, I would rather be our colour than your spotty white Herbert colour any day. Yeah. I'd rather be that than all the tea in India. China? You mean China? No, India. I like India tea. Yeah, I prefer India. <laughs> Chinese. No, that's, that's not. This is this is what Indian is, tea. This is, this oh, is look capital. here. Indian doctor's strange conduct in Liverpool doorway. He tells judge I had three Guinness, then everything went black. Crikey, that's twice he's done it in lunch hour. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get back to work. Great Come on, then. I think it is better that we are this colour. I mean, this colour is good for you, this colour. Because with this colour, you get many give it ones, yes? Yeah, not half. But not, not like him over there, white monkey. You not get many give it ones. Only got one wife with face like bloody boiled cabbage. <laughs> so he doesn't get only got one child. But it's better that you are this colour. So you get more give it ones. 
Don't agree. I think I think uh, black black color more attractive. More attractive to be black. You and me are black. Yes. Yeah. All so right. All right. Don't tell black. everybody. Okay. Look, no, but don't go too strong. But they make me so mad. These people. They make me so mad. Just because they have no sun and rain all the time and skin like dirty whitewash, they think they're superior to us. Bloody fools. All whoa, bloody fools. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Steady on, old son. Look, I know you're upset. You've had a very nasty experience, but don't watch it. You know. Just watch your step. Just take it easy. But I. I know you've had a very nasty experience. Right. So take it easy now. Now, if you want to get out on in this country, just don't go the other way. That's all. But I am not ashamed of being coloured. Yeah, but and we're not all that ashamed of our colour either, mate. So there. Marvellous, isn't it? You give me an inch and you want to take a mile. Don't you start feeling bloody superior, that's all. I am not feeling superior, I am, but I'm willing to meet any Englishman on equal footing. That's bloody big of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 Tell Diver T to put the kettle on. You'll probably find him in the Kazi. Bloody lazy sons of taffs are as bad as the mix. You see? He insult me again. What about bloody well said now? He insult the mix because he said the tatties are as bad as the mix. Oh, of course. You see, if you insult mix, you insult me because I am half Irish. And if you insult me as a Pakistani, you insult me because I'm Muslim. Half, half, half. Look, he, da, ha, ha, he didn't mean no offence then. No offense. Look, look, we all know that half of you is, is Muslim and the other half of Pakistani and half is Irish. We know that. What you're inclined to forget, old son, is that both halves of you look like Pakistani. Here, yeah, what he should do is blanco the Irish half. <laughs> I don't want to blanco half of me. Look like bloody zebra crossing. <laughs> now you see me. Now you don't. Now you don't. You people are so insulting to the Pakistanis. I remember my grandfather said when the English first come to India, they're very kind, very respectful, and we welcome them with open arms. All right, well we weren't too keen to rush into them. What about the wog birds? I bet you welcome them with open arms. No, no. And tell me, Pakistani never make race relations fight. Never. No, of course because not. Because they bleeding well didn't dare, mate. Because when we was out there, we was bloody well armed. Now, there you go again. Well, we was when we was out there. We weren't out there nicking the job in the houses. We was out there civilising them. That's what we was. The British bloody Raj. You are, you are civilising us? Educating you. Educating you. Yes, and a rotten bloody job we made of it too. It's one world and we've all got to live in it. Look, I know how you feel about Martha. I know that. I know that very well. He bloody likes them, he does. It's got nothing to do with liking them. I'm not saying we should like them. Accept them. I mean, it's only natural we prefer our own kind. That's human nature, isn't it? But we should not go around thumping them. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't go along with thumping them. Not all of them. <laughs> Lord Gort. Who's he? You, no, then never mind you, Lord Gort. Listen. Take your queen. Yeah. Now your queen, she accepts them. I'm not saying she likes them, but she accepts them. It invites them round to the house. I, I saw her only the other night, Her Majesty. Where did you see her? Well, on the telly. Oh. She wasn't working in the lily crap factory, was she? <laughs> she was on the telly there, and she that royal variety show version. Oh, yeah. She had one or two of them on that. She had several of them on that. Was sitting there chatting to him, shaking hands with him. Ah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they was all your top wogs, wasn't they? They was all prime minister wogs, they was. But she wouldn't invite the likes of Packy Paddy round the palace, would she? She wouldn't invite the likes of you round the ah. palace either, would she? No, Lord Gort. Ah. You know, never mind, Lord Gort. Listen to this. Wilson, your prime minister, he's friendly with them. He's friendly with them. All your top politicians, they're all friendly with them and accept them. Enoch, don't. Leave him out of it. He's the one that's stirring up the pudding. I'm talking about Wilson and Heath. All right, all right, well, take your Wilson and your Heath. How would they like it if a family of wogs moved in next door to them, eh? Blimey, if that happened, they'd soon be on Enoch's side. It's no good talking to you, is it? You're thick, you know, you're biased, you're prejudiced. Not prejudiced. Nothing to do with that. But I'll tell you one thing, mate. This country was far better off when all your blacks had white leaders. And I bet your queen would prefer that too. She'd prefer your blacks to have white leaders too, like in the old days. 
I've watched her, mate. I've watched her. And I've noticed she never takes her gloves off when she shakes hands with your wife, does she? <laughs> she never takes her gloves off to shake hands with anybody. She never takes her gloves off for anything, as far as I can see. <laughs> now, look, you want to know what I think? You want to know what I think? I tell you what I do, what they ought to do with the coons and wogs, your government, I mean. They ought to export them. <laughs> <laughs> export them? Export them. Not import them, like in the old days, mate. Oh, rubbish. Not rubbish. rubbish. Facts, mate. Facts. Facts. Yes. Facts. 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 Listen. Facts. Who was it? Who was it? Flogged America or their coons? They eh? answer me that. Us. They was understaffed in America in the old days, so we helped them out by flogging them all their coons. They was all coons, they was, but we had a surplus of them, all sitting about in Africa doing nothing. <laughs> so we exported them to ye Yanks, and they was bloody grateful. I suppose they're all that pleased now, but they was <laughs> grateful then. <laughs> so what we got to do is look around for countries which is understaffed and export the surplus we got now. Simple! Would solve your colour problem in this country overnight. <laughs> Fuck off! You can't go around flogging old coons and wugs all countries in the world. I mean, who'd take them? Who'd want them? Oh, hello. I've got a drink for you. I've got a drink for you. Good, good. Here it is. Export or die, is it? I'll tell you what they ought to do. They ought to die you and put you on the first bloody boat. Now, look, I wasn't talking about you so much, Kenny. I mean, you've got a bit of seniority. That is marvellous, isn't it? That is marvellous. You have no, no gratitude for people in this country at all. No gratitude for Pakistanis at all. Gratitude? What have we got to be grateful to you for? What? I fought for this country. Many Pakistani died for this country. There is a corner of some foreign field that is forever Pakistan. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that, sailor. You fought. I fought, sailor. Yes. That's true. That's true. Blimey, your Gurkhas were amongst your best soldiers in the world. Well, next year, British Tommy, the best, I reckon. That's right. Oh, well, well, yes. Me. I'll tell you what. I'd sooner fight alongside your Gurkha than your Froggy any day. Me too. If you ask any squatty, he'll tell you the same thing. There was only one trouble with your Gurkha. What was that? It's a bit loud on the old drums. Inclined to give your position away. <laughs> but, like the old British Tommy, he enjoyed using a bit of cold steel, and that's one thing a Jerry can't stand. <laughs> if a Gurkha took his knife out of his scabbard, that Gurkha was not allowed to put it back until he drew blood. Is that a fact? That's a fact. He used to creep up on the cover of darkness, creep up against your Jerry, and <laughs> slit his throat. And other things. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Pakistan are not Gurkhas. They not we don't go around cutting throat, cutting German doodles off. What are you talking about? <laughs> we fight war like civilized people, like Europeans, with guns, cannons, atom bombs, and German warfare. <laughs> we not savages. We Pakistanis are civilized. But I didn't say you was a Gurkha. Limey, you've got to have a beard to be a Gurkha. I know That's that. Right. What I'm saying is that Gurkhas are Indians. They're all Indians, aren't they? Pakistan is never Indian. I know, but you used to be Indians in the old days. Pakistan have always been Pakistani. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is that in the old days you all used to live in India. That's all I'm saying. All right, yes, Pakistan live in India, yes, but we don't like to live in India. We want our own country. Well, you've got your own country now. And who give it to them, eh? We did, the British bloody Raj, <laughs> mate. Norman told me that. Oh, yes, British give us our own country. Two bits. One small bit, one big bit. Then they put 1,000 bloody miles of India in between. <laughs> and if you want to cross from small bit to big bit, you have to run right clappers, otherwise Hindus knock the crap out of you. <laughs> They're the bloody grateful, are they? You give them two bits instead of one, and that's a bloody moan. Oh, Kevin's grateful, aren't you, Kevin? I made him a nice curry tonight, and he was very grateful. It's not his fault that he's coloured, it's his dad's fault, not his. There is nothing wrong in being coloured. Many great people are coloured. Al Johnson was one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Allah, Allah, Gandhi and uh, the Prophet Muhammad, all colored people. No, it's very good to be colored. Very good to be colored people. Oh, I don't know about that. All depends on where you are and the company you're in. Don't you worry, it's very good to be colored. Do you remember that? Jesus Christ was colored. Yeah, look what happened to him. What happened? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Jesus wasn't colored. He was white. How do you know? There's facts, in it. Facts! Colored. And I've seen pictures of him. Oh. All you say trying to imply that God's colored then, Sambo? I did not say that God was colored. Not your God. Well, what exactly are you trying to say then? You said his son's colored. All right, it doesn't mean that he's colored too. I mean, my father is white, but I'm colored. Like him, like Jesus, Colored. He's going to get one in a minute if he keeps talking about God like yeah, that. Yeah, steady on, Look, steady on. I'm not a religious man, but I'm not going to have the likes of him calling God a wog. <laughs> I'm not calling God a wog. The word wog was invented by you to describe Pakistani wogs. No, no. <laughs> oh, you better get him out of here before I thump him. Oh, shut up. Look, what makes you so sure that God ain't coloured then? Well, of course he ain't, is he? Of course he's bloody white. How do you know what colour God is? You ain't seen him, have you? It's like half where he says. We seen pictures of him, ain't we? Well, that's where you're bloody wrong, isn't it? Because you ain't seen no pictures of God. No salt, no one has. What you see, mate, is pictures of Jesus. That's all you bloody seen. Yeah, and he's white in a minute, and so's his dad. All you bloody seen is pictures, mate, pictures. Yeah, pictures, pictures, and the camera don't bloody lie, do it? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, right away, sir. Right. Tell P.C. Kellett can have the black swan at the double. Now it's a religious bloody riot. <laughs> <laughs>